What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, January 17th. Uh, before we jump into the alerts, let's check out who got caught being hot. Uh, this week goes to our friend Alex S., who's uh, been pretty active in the last month and just jumping in, sharing trade ideas, helping out other people. So congrats, Alex. You got caught being hot. If we jump into the alerts, starting with Monday the 13th, uh, let's see, the first trade we did was an opening trade in Tesla. So we opened up a, a new reverse iron duck in Tesla. If we go to the platform, uh, Tesla has, you know, had this huge march higher and then is, is pulled back a little bit, but we put this on um, on Monday. And so if we take a look at our trade here, you can see prices come down off where we put it on uh, down into the beak. Uh, still got a decent chance of, of getting back into the duck head. The one thing to remember on this one, so these options expire on 2-1. And I didn't realize, and, and it's still not confirmed, but Tesla's uh, set to announce earnings on 129. So that's before the expiration date. So if if we get a little bit of down movement in Tesla early next week, we'll probably just take this off and book book the big profits. The problem with where it stands, where they announce before uh, the expiration, is you know let's say price runs up this week and it's you know hanging out in here. Well then you know price is gonna be hanging out right here before earnings and doesn't give us that big buffer like we like to see. And so we'll just have to make a decision uh, whether to take this off before the earn earnings announcement, before uh, before expiration, or what we want to do. But right now it's hanging out here, and if it moves, even if it's not down to our normal you know 10% chance or less of getting back to the duck head, we may take this off early and just book that big profit. But we'll see what happens next week, and uh, we'll send an alert once we do that. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in GC. So we closed out our one of our iron condors in gold, booked almost 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And then we're still holding our other piece. So if we take a look here, it's this short call vertical where you can see prices just outside of the range. So if we get a little bit of down movement back into range in gold, we can close that one out. Uh, IV is decent. If we take a look at GLD, the corresponding ETF, you can see IV percentiles at 44. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's one of the highest on the board. So we wouldn't be afraid to add a new kind of centered iron condor uh, around the current price. Uh, but we'll see where that shakes out. And then if we look at the options of forward slash GC, this has 39 days to expiration. And so we've got a lot of time with that short call vertical to get potentially back into range. Uh, so we may we may wait until you know these get down to more closer to that 60 day range before we add one, and then we can add it in that next cycle to kind of diversify those. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how quickly you know price moves and whether it moves back into our range or whatever. But that that's kind of the plan in gold. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in ZB. So we closed out one set of our short strangles, booked over 35% of max profit on that piece, and then we're still holding that 161 straddle. And um, so let's take a look at that. You can see prices hanging out right here. Let me widen this out so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, right here on this hash mark. So we will be looking to add to this potentially too. If we look at TLT, uh, well, the implied volatility has come down a little bit, but again, it's still one of the higher ones on the board. So we would potentially add to this. Of course, it'd be a nice if we got a little bit of a spike up in implied volatility before we did so. Uh, but we will look to potentially add to that one. And if we look at the options, kind of like we just did in gold, if we take a look here, these have 35 days to expiration. And so uh, let me get to the continuous contract here. To look at all the expiration cycles so that one's got 35 the next one's got 70 so we could potentially add in march or you know depending on what price does early next week we might wait until this gets down to closer to 60 before we add to it so we will see what happens there next trade closing trade in amazon so we closed out our iron duck in amazon booked a beak profit on that one um, it's a situation where Price ran higher with very little chance of getting back into the duckhead, so we just went ahead and closed that out, booked those profits, and ran. 
Next trade, closing trade in Tesla. So we had a, another reverse iron duck on in Tesla. Uh, unfortunately, with that big move higher, uh, price came through our break even, so we needed to exit. So we just we just closed that. It, it exceeded our exit point, so we, we took a loss on that reverse duck. Next trade, closing trade in booking. So we had a, an, a regular iron duck in booking. Uh, price ran higher, booked beak profit on that trade. Then we did a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we've got our two sets of short call verticals. We, we went ahead and rolled this one. This one was in January, had only three days to expiration. We skipped over February and just went out to March with 66 days. Remember, we, we typically like to be in that 30 to 60 day range. But when you're looking at like these short delta plays, for example, you know, going out a little bit longer is not a big deal. So we went ahead and just did that to extend duration. Kept uh, adjust our strikes, so now we're at the 289, 294. So kept that short delta in our portfolio. So let's take a look at that on the platform. Take a look at DIA. We've got these two different sets. So we've still got the one in February, and so that you can see price is out of our range there. Need some downside to get back in. And then the one from the alert that I just mentioned is right here. So price is just outside the range. So again, needing some, some downside action to get back into range there. Speaking of downside action, that just hasn't been a part of uh, the world that we live in lately. <laughs> here's, here's the S&P, you know, going back to the beginning of December and nothing, nothing but upside. So hopefully we get a little, a little bit of a pullback soon. That would definitely help, help out our implied volatility opportunities, as well as, uh, of course, our short delta positions. Next trade, opening trade in Beyond Meat. So we put on a, a reverse iron duck, Beyond Meat. Let's go to the chart real quick before I touch on that trade, uh, BYND. So you see we had, you know, they the Impossible came out and announced that they were uh, coming out with a pork product. They also said they were going to focus on that as opposed to going after like a McDonald's, which in turn helped the prospects of Beyond Meat. And we just saw just a parabolic up move. And then it just, it's come, it came down pretty quick after one of the banks downgraded it. And so now it's just kind of chopping around. But we, we, so we put on this um, uh, reverse iron duck on that up move. And the very next day after that, after it kind of collapsed off of its highs, uh, it, there's a very little chance of it getting back to the book, uh, duckhead. So we just went ahead and booked that, booked, booked a quick beak profit overnight on Beyond Meat. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So we've got two pieces on here. We had our one inverted strangle and we went ahead and added another. Applied volatilities continue to stay decent in Natty Gas, making it for a good vehicle to sell premium in. So here, and we've got a, Nat Gas is down about 3% today. And by the way, at the time of this recording, it's only about 12.30. So we've got a couple hours left before the market closes. But uh, here's our two positions in Nat Gas. Here's the one that we just put on. And after the down movement the last couple of days, we, you can see it's uh, hanging out right here. And then our inverted piece is hanging out right here. So price is outside of the range. But if we look at just the untested side, just the calls, uh, you can see there's still a there's still a good chunk of premium left in those options. So we're not looking to roll down our calls yet, but if price continues to slide lower next week, uh, we may look to roll those calls down and continue to collect that credit. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DE. So this was our last remaining January position. There's only two days to expiration. And so we went ahead and rolled this out to Feb with 37 and adjusted our strikes to the 175, 180 to keep that short delta exposure. And so let's take a look at DE. You can see price is still right, sit on, right inside our range here, but just again, holding this for that downside short delta uh, exposure. Next trade, closing trade in AZO. So we had a, an iron duck in AZO. Price ran higher, just booked that beak profit in there because there's very little chance of getting back to the duck head. Now that was one that was, and let me just take a look at this for you. AZO is not the most liquid stock. It's a it's a high price stock. You know, it's over a thousand dollars. It's over it's eleven forty eight right now, and so you know that's a great size to trade these iron ducks on. The problem is the the implied or the uh, excuse me the open interest. Let's just go to the fourteen day weeklies. 
the open interest is pretty sparse. You know, we like to have it be in the triple digits in the hundreds or more. You got some in the double digits, a lot of these in the single. So, and, and the bid ask spreads are, they're, they're actually not that wide compared, you know, comparatively speaking for a thousand dollar stock, you know, being a buck wide, isn't that bad. Um, but the open interest isn't there. So it's a little tougher getting filled. Um, so you really have to work these. It's not something that we want to trade every day, but uh, it just happened to, you know, we were looking for opportunities with, with implied volatility being as low as it is, and uh, AZO fit the bill, so we went ahead and uh, placed a trade in that, and then we went ahead and closed it out and just booked that beak profit, so good trade in AZO. Next trade, uh, closing trade in CL, so we had an iron duck in CL. Uh, we were close to, to the duck head, but Price just kind of hang, was hanging out right near our break even on expiration day. And so we went ahead and just closed that out. Booked a tiny profit, uh, but I um, uh, had to get out because it was the last trading day. Opening trade in RUT. So we put on another one of our weekly double calendars in RUT. It's doing well right now. Uh, it's up uh, 160 some bucks. And this one, we put this on with eight days to expiration. It's now got seven in the front week, and so we will look to potentially take this off next Thursday or Friday. And uh, so price is hanging out right here dead center, so hopefully it kind of bounces around in that range and we can book a profit there. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in ZW. So we had two, two, uh, two pieces on in ZW. I had one short call vertical and then one full iron condor. Took the full one off, booked 40% uh, of max profit on that, and then we've still got the short call vertical with eight days, so we'll be doing something with that in the next week. So let's take a look at ZW. Price is outside the range, so we need a we need a pretty sharp move lower to get back into range, so we'll probably just close this out. Got a couple of questions in the community of, you know, are we going to roll this? And the answer is no. I mean, typically the only time we're going to roll and in the money uh, call vertical is if it's a short delta play and we want to keep that short delta in our in our position. I don't have any bias in wheat. You know, I don't I don't want to keep short bias in wheat for any specific reason. It doesn't really do much for our overall portfolio. So most likely we'll just close that out, take a loss on that piece, and then just continue to uh, add to this. So early next week we'll probably look to add a another kind of centered iron condor around the current price and then close out our current short call vertical. So that's the plan in wheat. Next trade, open up a new iron duck in SPX. Uh, this one with 20 days to expiration. So just kind of laddering in here, we've got two iron ducks in SPX now. So if we take a look, uh, here's the one that we already had. You can see prices up here. If we put our price slice right at the edge of the beak here, um, you can see we've got about a 15% chance of getting back to the duck head. So if price kind of stays here or moves higher next week, we'll probably just close that out, book that beak profit. And then the one that we just put on is this one here, where you can see it's pretty close to where we put it on. You know, still a, uh, still a well, let's adjust our dates here to 2-6. Uh, still, still over a 30% chance of getting back to the duck head. So in good shape there. Closing trade in Google. So this one was a uh, this one was pretty frustrating. So that we had a reverse iron duck on in Google. Price move higher. You know it was past it 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 shot up this morning, and so we had to close it out. Uh, took a took a loss on that one. If we take a look at a chart of Google. Oops. Well, let's go to the charts. G O O G L. You know, so we so right here. I mean, in the last twenty minutes of trade yesterday, uh, price kind of shot up a little bit, and we were outside of our break even right right at the uh, end of the day, real close to to our exit point. And then we woke up this morning, and and Google shot up even higher. So, uh, you know, that's just that's part of trading. We got to kind of stick with the mechanics, but ended up taking a taking a decent loss on Google. So, a little bit frustrating because we, you know. On, on Thursday, you know, it was looking like we had a chance if it just came down a little bit, we would have a chance at a full max profit duck head. Instead, it went the other way and, and shot higher on us. So that is just part of the game, unfortunately. Uh, next trade, closing trade in SMH. So uh, SMH, 
implied volatility has really dwindled in there uh, to a point where, you know, down to zero on the IV percentile. So uh, we were over 50% of max profit on the piece that we had on. And with and we've had this on, one on with all adjustments um, uh, going back several months. We ended up booking a profit <clears throat> on the trade. So we went ahead and just ex uh, closed it out instead of continuing with implied volatility as low as it is. Uh, we went ahead and just took profits in SMH. Lastly, we opened a new trade in Boeing, symbol BA. Did a pre-earnings long straddle, uh, just targeting about 15 to 20% on this trade. They do announce earnings on 129 before the market opens, so we want to exit by 128. So let me take a look at BA and show you kind of what the thought process was behind this one. So... Um, Price has come down significantly since we put this on today, but price was hanging out right here and implied volatility, you know, had contracted. It was closer to around the 60 range at the time that we put it on today. Um, and so the the thought process was, okay, price has really been consolidating over the last couple of weeks. Implied volatility has contracted significantly. Like I said, it was it was down to about the down to about the 60 range at the time we put this on today. So implied volatility contracted significantly. Price had really consolidated in here. So remember, a pre-earnings long straddle benefits from a decent price move in either direction and implied volatility expansion. Now, implied volatility typically likes to expand going into earnings. So if we can get that IV expansion as well as a decent price move, which we're getting the start of right here, then that's what's going to benefit this trade. So if we take a look here, you can see we just put this on this morning. It's already up 120 some dollars. And obviously, if we continue lower and implied volatility continues to expand, that is what's going to benefit us. So we put this on total uh, total cost about sixteen hundred dollars in buying power. And so 15 to 20 percent of that, you know, if we can get 300 you know, or more dollars uh, on that before we have to exit, that is kind of the plan on B.A., that's it. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. ES, we've got this long put vertical that we're holding for short delta just outside the range. So looking for some downside to get back into range there. I mentioned gold, I think. Yeah, we're going to look to potentially add to that one next week. Natty Gas, I mentioned bonds. I mentioned wheat. Apple continues its climb. We've got this uh, long put vertical on. Need some downside to get back into range there. That one's out in February, so we got a decent amount of time. Still have 35 days until uh, those options expire, so holding holding on there. Uh, BA, I mentioned. DE, I mentioned that one. DIA, I mentioned. IWM, we've got a, uh, a long put vertical here. Price is just outside of our range on this one, so need a little downside to get back in. Again, another short delta position. Same with QQQ, we've got two sets of short call verticals. This is this is one of them. Price is hanging out right here near the break even. And then the other one here, price is outside. So in this one, um, you know, because we've got a lower probability of getting back into range and we want to get back to a positive theta position, we'll probably look to roll this one next week. RUT I mentioned, SPX I mentioned, SPY. Uh, another short delta uh, position here. Short call vertical that was part of a previous iron condor. So we will look to um, roll this here. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for it to get closer down to expiration. But if it moves much higher, we will potentially roll that one out to March. Tesla, I mentioned that one. And lastly, XLK, another one that we need a little downside action for. So you know, hold on. I mean, this this run in the market is just it's is pretty crazy. So, you know, if we can just get a little bit of a pullback, it's gonna make a huge difference on some of these short delta positions. So you gotta you gotta keep that for that downside risk, for that downside exposure uh, when you're selling premium like we do. Uh, of course it hurts when we when we get this upside. Now, keep in mind, um, along those lines, we are getting ready to release our newest strategy course. Uh, it's called the Portfolio Bunker Strategy. Uh, the date is January 28th. We'll be posting this next week, but January 28th at uh, 4 p.m. Central Time is when we'll be presenting. And 
it's all about protecting your portfolio and it's going to be a, a way that's going to allow you to protect your portfolio from from huge volatility but it doesn't have that drag on your performance when um, you know when we see these huge extended moves like we we've, we've seen so Make sure you can attend uh, again January 28th, 4 p.m. We'll be emailing and posting more details. You'll get plenty of plenty of notice about it, but I just wanted to give you you guys as pro members a heads up here. And I look forward to it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great strategy to complement the rest of our strategies. You know, we the one thing, you know, for selling strangles, even if we're doing iron ducks, which have a huge downside buffer. Uh, you know, we still have that tail risk, right? We still have that black swan risk uh, if, if things get really crazy. And so, uh, that's what this, that's what this strategy is all about. It's a, it's a portfolio protection strategy. And that's why we call it a bunker because it's protecting us. Uh, we're, we're able to hide our portfolio in it to, to minimize damage if, uh, if something crazy happens. So look forward to sharing that with you. It's going to be exciting stuff. Uh, everybody have a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week.